Um, yeah, as, as was just discussed, Fedora is uh, kind of the default underlying storage and preservation layer for Islandora. Uh, currently with Islandora 8, it's Fedora version 5. We're working on version 6, and the, and the biggest change there is just this uh, introduction of the Oxford common file layout as a standard for um, how things are, are, are stored and laid out on disk. And, and so I'll be talking about that today, uh, particularly with regard to how that um, improves, uh, enhances support for uh, digital preservation in the system. So we had a few high level goals with Fedora 6. Um, one is somewhat less relevant to Islandora, um, and this is reducing the effort required to migrate. Of course, Islandora has its own uh, migration tool that uh, I think folks are familiar with. It's been discussed about how to get content from uh, Islandora 7 into Islandora 8. Um, but uh, uh, for a lot of Fedora 3 setups, um, they needed uh, uh, some additional uh, help to get that uh, uh, to, to assist in that migration effort. And that's, um, so that's one of the things that we were looking at, but I think more relevant to Islandora is just enhancing the, the long-term uh, digital preservation features that Fedora offers. Uh, so I'll be talking about that in a little bit more detail, uh, but also just improving the performance and scale. Um, we released Fedora 4 and version 5 a few years ago. Um, and over the years, a uh, number of uh, performance and scale issues have popped up and we've been Paying, paying attention to those and, and listening to feedback from the community and working to address them. And so Fedora 6, um, I think, does a lot uh, to uh, address those concerns. Uh, and actually, one of the main ways that it, it does that is by replacing this uh, mode shape component, which might be less familiar to the Islandora community. Uh, really, uh, this would only be for folks that are currently using Islandora 8 running on top of uh, Fedora 5. Uh, Fedora 3 had a different um, backend infrastructure. but. Um, mode shape was a, a, a nice component to get us up and running when we um, built uh, Fedora 4, but um, has a number of um, issues in particular scenarios around performance and scale that we wanted to address. And so that's one of the main things that um, Fedora 6 is going to do is getting rid of this component and, and um, replacing it with an implementation of the Oxford common file layout, which I'll talk about here next. Um, it's just an emerging standard around digital preservation and how to lay things out um, in, a, in a way that, that uh, supports preservation. Uh, but I think importantly, we're also trying not to make major changes to the Fedora API. And this is the primary primary way that Islandora interacts with Fedora. And so ideally, uh, upgrading to Fedora 6 won't mean changing any of the ways that Islandora interacts with Fedora through the API, because the API is largely the same. Really, what we're mostly changing is just how content is stored uh, on the file system in the back end. Um, and again, this is somewhat less uh, relevant to um, Islandora, but uh, we are uh, planning on releasing with uh, uh, migration tooling and support, certainly from version three um, to, to version six, um, but, but also all previous versions. So I want to talk a little bit about the Oxford Common File Layout for those that haven't uh, necessarily heard much about this effort. It, it did actually come from the Fedora community, but has become uh, its own uh, specification, its own digital preservation effort that's much broader than that. So there are lots of folks that are using the Oxford Common File layout that have nothing to do with uh, Fedora, but it is something that Fedora intends to implement. And at a high level, really this is, it, it, it's a standard, so it's a, it's a non-proprietary uh, specified open standard approach to the layout of preservation persistence. In other words, how you take your files and folders and you lay them out uh, at your, in your storage layer um, uh, to, to make them better. Uh, to, to better support digital preservation. And kind of at a high level, I think these are some of the things that it offers. I'm going to go through each of these uh, bullets in, in, in turn, but this is sort of the, uh, uh, the, the high level features of OCFL, particularly from the Fedora and Islandora perspective, uh, and things like parsability, robustness, and versioning, uh, as well as storage diversity and completeness. But I'm, I'm going to go through each of these in turn. So when I talk about parsability here, this is just the idea that uh, both humans and machines can understand the content, uh, the way it's stored uh, in the absence of the original software. And there's a little kind of screenshot there on, on, on the side. There's a lot more detail at, uh, uh, if you go to ocfl.io, uh, you'll find the specification and, and a lot more detail on how things are laid out. But um, fundamentally, this is just a standard that says, you know, you take all of your content and you lay it out in a fairly simple file and folder structure. Uh, one way to think about the, this, if you're familiar with the Bagot specification, is that uh, OCFL is largely Bagot with versioning added, um, so if that helps. Uh, but it, the idea is that it's transparent, uh, the content isn't stored in some proprietary database schema, it's all laid out in a very simple file and folder structure, 
actually somewhat similar to the way that things were done in Fedora 3, except Fedora 3 didn't really do this in accordance with any particular standard. And in this case, it's, it's uh, done in a more standardized way. Um, and so in disaster recovery situations, if your application failed and you weren't able to access anything through the Drupal layer, for example, or even through the Fedora API, uh, if, as long as you had your, your, your file system, you could still recover all that content and, and read it and understand it. Um, and it's also machine readable in the sense that you can build very simple client applications to uh, sit on top of the, the root uh, object in the structure and just read in the contents and kind of get a basic understanding for, uh, for what's there. Uh, robustness here is, is largely in the sense of fixity, so being able to guard against corruption. Um, and OCFL is a very strong sense of, of fixity built into it. Uh, there are inventory files that sort of uh, you know, lay out all of the, uh, all of the content, uh, all the checksums, and, and so you can sort of validate the, the contents of an object uh, re with reference to this inventory file. Uh, and the objects themselves are intended to be self-contained. Um, it, it versioning is, is, as I said, o OCFL does have a strong sense of uh, versioning, um, and so this is, uh, uh, and it does it in, in a way called um, forward delta, which is, um, uh, for those who are unfamiliar with this, it just, whenever you create a new version of an object, and so if at the Islandora layer you created a new version, at the OCFL layer where the actual uh, files and folders are stored, uh, you get a new version directory, but only the files that have changed between versions actually get created in this new folder. So you're not constantly copying um, uh, files that, don't, that haven't changed between versions. They just stay in the original version folder and you have this inventory file that can sort of reconstruct the complete object that way. So it, it's a way of saving space and deduplicating. Uh, storage diversity here is just, uh, really this is just in here to say that the OCFL really has nothing to say about storage. So you can use it uh, a cloud-based storage, you can use local storage, you know, you know, anything that can support this kind of file and folder metaphor, um, OCFL will uh, support that. So it's, it's not meant to kind of dictate what storage media you use. In fact, in fact, I think originally it was called the Oxford Common File System Layout and then was changed to File Layout, just to make it clear that this really doesn't have anything to say about where you put your files, just how you lay them out. Uh, and finally, completeness, uh, and this is just the idea that you should be able to reconstruct your repository, at least all of the data and metadata, just from these files and folders stored on disk. And you know, there are a lot of standards out there, right? you know, TDR or, or NDSA has some standards, you know, OAIS, and a lot of these standards talk about what you should do, but don't necessarily provide concrete guidance on how to do it. And, and that's one of the things that the OCFL is trying to provide, is a, a very clear uh, set of instructions for how you can lay out your files and folders on disk to better support digital preservation. So just to kind of summarize what I think are some of the advantages here, both to Fedora and to Islandora, um, one of them certainly is this idea of application independent persistence. So just the idea that your content doesn't depend on your Drupal application or your Fedora application or any of those uh, other kind of components of your system stack, if any of those things kind of fail you still have your data in a machine and human readable way that you can recover from. Um, and, and so, yeah, being able to interpret that data, um, I think is really important from that long-term digital preservation perspective. If, if you're looking at a long time horizon, you can't depend that these applications are gonna last forever, but certainly if the files and folders are human and machine readable at the level of, of, of the storage layer, then that makes it a lot more likely that they'll stand the test of time. Um, the ability to rebuild the repository, I think, is really important. This feature doesn't exist yet in Islandora 8 because we haven't got to the step yet where we've integrated Fedora 6, and that's something we'll be looking at over the next few months. Um, but, but ideally, this is something that you would be able to do. You can do it at the Fedora level, but we'll have to make sure um, that this is possible at the, at the Islandora level as well, being able to kind of reconstruct your repository just from the contents on disk. Um, but the other advantage here is fewer migrations in, in the future. Certainly, our intention and the intention of the OCFL generally is that as new applications are built, those applications conform to the OCFL in terms of how things are stored on disk, rather than the other way around, which is usually how it goes, where a new application comes out and then you have to migrate your data because that application specifies a different way that the data needs to be uh, laid out. So you go through all these migrations. So one of the big goals of OCFL is that you just, you don't have to migrate the data as often because new applications will conform to the way your data is already laid out because they'll conform to uh, the OCFL. Uh, 
So in terms of where the specification is, uh, actually the, the 1.0 was just released uh, earlier this month. There's a kind of a brief timeline there to, to give you a sense. Um, and really what was holding up that re the release was just uh, all of these release criteria, which have now been met. So that there is a validator that you can run to verify that your contents on disk conform to the OCFL. There's a test suite um, that, that you can run as well. There are fixture objects. So if you want to just kind of test with some, some uh, default test objects, those all exist. Uh, and multiple institutional commitments uh, for folks that are using this, uh, uh, this standard. And just to give you a sense, this, is, this really is beyond Fedora, uh, which I think is a good thing. We're, we're not trying to invent something that we have to maintain ourselves. This is something that we can, it's a community that we can participate in. And these are just some of the institutions that are currently doing things with OCFL. Uh, all the links are embedded in the slides, which I've shared. So if you want to explore some of these tools and implementations, there's just really a lot of activity going on here. Lots of different programming languages, lots of different efforts around clients and validators, et cetera. So, um, and there are actually, repositories currently running in production as far away as Australia that use OCFL already, even though the spec was just released. So I think this is a really active effort and one that has been well received, particularly in the uh, digital preservation community. So just to wrap up, I'll talk a little bit about where we are. Uh, we are running uh, the first full week of every month, we're running a, a code sprint for Fedora 6. Um, and that's sort of all through this year uh, with the goal of getting to a, a beta release this year. Uh, we have a number of pilot partners they're listed there these are institutions that have agreed to work with us a little bit more closely uh, we're really eager to make sure that all along the way as we develop we're validating as we go and making corrections as needed so we don't sort of get all the way to the end and realize we've made a bunch of errors that we need to go back and correct for uh, and of course we want to hear from the community so there's lots of ways to uh, provide feedback uh, and if anyone is interested in testing i have some links at the end of the presentation for where you can go to um, get the uh, the latest code Uh, and of course, none of this would be possible without our members. We, like the Island Dora Foundation, uh, are funded through membership, um, and, and all of this uh, funding helps uh, uh, pay for full-time staff. Myself as a program leader, uh, we have two folks both working at 50% uh, as tech leads, uh, Andrew Woods and Danny Lamb, uh, who are, and all of us are there just to try to uh, keep this effort moving and support the communities as we go forward. So uh, certainly thank you to any of these uh, institutions that are uh, currently supporting us. Um, and uh, this is just a really important way to make sure that the work continues and the software uh, keeps uh, uh, being updated and, and supported over time. Uh, just to let you know where we are, we're basically in an alpha state. We haven't actually cut an alpha release yet, but that is more or less where we are. We're at a point where uh, we're able to do some testing. It's not feature complete yet, so we're not quite at the beta, but um, all of the basic features in terms of resource management, versioning, uh, an upgraded migration utility, which is again less relevant to the Island Dora community, but uh, for anyone who's running Fedora 3 with a custom front end, this would be relevant. Um, the ability re to rebuild the repository. A new feature that we have added, and this is a separate API, um, but th there is now a kind of an integrated search feature. This is something that um, uh, people have been asking for for some time. So you, you can now directly query content in Fedora in a synchronous fashion without having to hook up an external uh, solar index or something like that, and, which is not, this is largely an administrative search function, but it's quite useful if you're doing uh, development, for example. Uh, in terms of the timelines, yeah, there's code you can pull down now and test. Uh, we've got another sprint happening in August, uh, and we hope to get a beta release out later this year. Uh, depends a lot on just sort of community uh, supporting contributions, but um, uh, the progress has been really great so far. And so I'm um, really looking forward to being able to get that release out. Uh, I've just included some links here to the various things that we have set up. Uh, one of the things that we put some effort in over the last couple of weeks is just uh, documenting a number of performance and scale tasks that can be run. And these include applications uh, that you can use to run the tests, test scripts, things like that. Uh, I've run them locally on my laptop uh, and you really don't need to be a developer to run these, although it helps to have some technical background. Uh, but I would encourage folks to take a look at those. Um, largely, we're just trying to make sure that all of the various cases that have been reported in the past around performance and scale that we're, we're addressing those. Um, and lots of communication channels, if you want to join us on Slack, uh, much like I, the, uh, the Island or Slack, there is a Fedora Slack um, and a way to, uh, to become a member. Um, so I think I'll leave it at that. There's probably a couple of minutes left here, but my email address is there. If you want to uh, get in touch with me, if you have any questions, um, happy to answer those now or, um, uh, or later if you, uh, if you think of something later. Um, so thanks.